Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Staring into the Abyss. I am your host, horror author James Hershey Jr., and with me, as always, my co-host, old boy James Ash. How you doing, brother? I'm doing pretty good on this Halloween night. How's everyone? This week's show is going to be creepy as hell. As we sit here and record this, it is Halloween night right now, because we record our show on Thursday nights, and it is right now Halloween as we speak. And I came across this article that just blew me away because when I first read the headline, I thought it was just a straightforward article. I thought, ah, these people are kind of jerks. You know, it's kind of bad. And as you read it, it just gets crazy. And I started thinking, man, could you imagine if this happened to you? Okay, so I realize you have no idea what the hell I'm talking about because I have not read the article to you yet. So that's what I'm going to do right now. We're going to get started with this article. And as we go, you're going to understand why we decided to do this for Halloween. The article is from NBCNews.com. So it is a major news site. And this is a major case that is going on. The, the headline is, Indiana couple pleads not guilty to abandoning adopted daughter moving to Canada. It's by Minivon Burke. And it's from September 27, 2019. It says, an Indiana couple accused of abandoning their young adopted daughter and moving the rest of their family to Canada made their first appearance in court Friday. Christine Barnett and her now ex-husband, Michael, both pleaded not guilty to two counts of felony neglect of a dependent after prosecutors accused them of legally changing their daughter Natalia's age from 8 to 22, and then leaving her alone in an apartment in Lafayette in Tippecanoe County in 2013. Now already, you're probably like, what the hell? Not only did they leave the kid all by itself, right? They just bailed on it. But somehow they legally changed the kid's age from 8 to 22. That doesn't make any sense. How did that even happen? This is where it starts to get a little weird and where I thought, Wait a minute, I'm not dealing with a normal article here. This is something different. So we're going to continue. The couple, along with their biological children, then moved to Canada, according to a probable cause affidavit. They have both said that Natalia, who has a form of dwarfism, was actually an adult when they adopted her in 2010 and was pretending to be a child. I know, right? Creepy. Christine Barnett also told... WISH-TV in Indianapolis that Natalia was diagnosed as both a psychopath and a sociopath. Following Friday's hearing, Christine Barnett declined to comment on the case when approached by reporters outside the courthouse. Her attorney, Philip Hayes, told NBC News that his client is, quote, ready for this to be adjudicated, end quote, and is looking forward to telling her story in court. Terrence Kennard, an attorney for Michael Barnett, held a brief news conference following the hearing and said that he believes his client and Christine Barnett will be vindicated of the charges. He also told reporters that he does not believe Natalia has ever been truthful about her actual age. The Tippecanoe County Sheriff's Office became involved in September 2014 when Natalia told authorities that she had not seen Michael and Christine Barnett since they rented an apartment for her and left her there while they moved to Canada. Natalia is originally from Ukraine and came to the United States in 2008 through an adoption program according to court documents. She was adopted by the Barnett family in November of 2010. Christine Barnett told WISH-TV that she and Michael initially believed they were adopting a child. According to the probable cause affidavit, Hospital records from June 2010 showed that Natalia's age was approximately eight years old. However, hospital records from two years later, in June of 2012, showed her age to be about 11, the affidavit says. That same year, prosecutors alleged that Michael and Christine Barnett legally changed Natalia's age to 22, and Christine instructed Natalia to tell people that she looked young but was an adult. It remains unclear how the couple was able to change her age. According to prosecutors, the alleged neglect went on from July 2013 
to February 2016, when Natalia moved out of the Tippecanoe County area. They have not said where she currently is or how she was able to care for herself while she was alone in Indiana. Christine Barnett is due back in court in December for a pretrial conference, and Michael Barnett is scheduled to appear in October for a confidential hearing, according to the online court records. Now that is the end of this article. Now as you dig into this story, because I dug into it, because I thought this is, this is weird, man. First of all, you have this couple that adopts this little kid, this little eight-year-old girl from the Ukraine, and they rent her an apartment and then just bail. Now, they, they didn't do this right away, but after a while, they, they changed her age legally to 22, and they rented an apartment and left and just abandoned her there. So you're thinking, they're saying that she's an adult, that she's a, just a dwarf, that she's not really a kid, and that's why they did it. But she was able to survive completely on her own for three years, no problem. Now, to me, if it was an actual eight-year-old child, would that eight-year-old child be able to survive on her own for three years and take care of herself? I mean, I realize eight years old, you're not, you're not a toddler. I mean, you can still, you know, you can make yourself food. You can do stuff like that. But to me, that just seems like an eight-year-old kid would freak out being on her own like that for so long. They would have said something to somebody. They would have called the police. They would have told somebody at the supermarket something. That, hey, I, my parents left me. I'm all by myself. I need help. That didn't happen. So as I researched this case, I read multiple different articles on it. I read a lot of different stuff on it. And it turns out there's a hell of a lot more to this than they talk about on this NBC News article. According to the parents, they say that this kid, who they believe to be an actual adult dwarf, was very, very creepy. And she began to do scarier and scarier things as time went on. At first, she would just kind of look at him weird. She would give him this scary, evil stare that looked like she wanted to rip their heads off. And it, it was unsettling. It made them feel in fear for their lives. It made them feel uncomfortable. As time went on, she did more and more things. Sometimes they would wake up and she was standing over top their bed just looking down at them. And when they would say something, she would tell them that she was going to kill them, that she was going to murder them in their sleep. As more time went on, they said that she would even be standing there at their bed while they were sleeping with a knife in her hand. And they would wake up and they would see this little evil dwarf standing there with a knife in her hand, talking about how she couldn't wait to kill them. That's kind of crazy. Now, now think about the fact that they have other children. So you got to be concerned not only for your own safety in this situation, but you got to be concerned about your other kids as well. Your job as a parent is to keep your children safe. So as I looked into this and I learned more and more about this case, not only was it very interesting and absolutely different than anything I've ever seen before, I mean, this seems like it would be the plot of a horror movie. I mean, it's that bad. But I begin to, to kind of put myself into the parents' place and think, what would I do if this happened to me? If I decided for whatever reason to adopt a child, maybe my wife and I couldn't have children anymore. Maybe we were just trying to be good people and do the right thing and, and give a child a chance at a better life who didn't have one, that needed one. If I was to do something like that and bring a child into my home and into my family and my life, and then I find out that that kid is not a kid, that it's actually an adult, and that that adult is not only threatening my life, but threatening my children's lives as well, I don't think that I would have rented that dwarf a apartment and just moved away. I mean, I would have, I don't know what I would have done, honestly. I mean, if it comes down to my kids, I'm, I, I might have to do some midget tossing. And I know that's not politically correct to say, but I might have to grab that little dwarf and chuck her out the window or something. You know, put her in the wood stove. I don't know, do something. Because I, I just keep thinking, when I read this story, I, I think about like a Chucky movie or something. You know, this, uh, this little tiny thing trying to kill you. And I just can't imagine 
being in that position. I can't imagine living with this little evil thing that wants to kill you and your family. They didn't just leave right away. They had to do something. They had to figure it out. Okay, we're going to have to try to change your age so that maybe we won't get in so much trouble if we bail. And then we got to make sure that she has an apartment before we go and rent her this place so she's set up and okay. And then we can get out of here. I don't know how they did that. I mean, I, I, there's no way I could have done that. I mean, you either have to do something about that threat right away, whether that is getting in contact with the authorities, you know, calling the cops and saying, hey, look, this is going to sound insane, but this little girl is actually a psychotic dwarf from the Ukraine that wants to murder my family. So can you take her to hell away or, or something? Can we figure something out here? You would either have to do that or you'd have to kind of take matters into your own hand. Now, I'm not advocating that. If she didn't actually hurt anybody, then you can't really justifiably do anything to hurt her because she hasn't done anything yet other than be extremely creepy and, and threaten you. That still doesn't justify committing violence towards her. Although I can definitely understand why somebody might because, I mean, when you're talking about your kids especially, I mean, kind of everything goes out the window at that point if you're trying to protect your children. But I don't know, man. This one really hit home with me because this is, is just insane. I mean, I cannot imagine being in this situation. And I'm sure as you're listening to this right now, you're like, oh, my God, what would I do in that situation? You know, And I'd, I'd really like everybody that's listening to the show right now, leave a comment down in the comment section on the YouTube video. If you're listening on the radio, go to the YouTube page. Uh, it's youtube.com slash James Hershey Jr. And click on this video and leave me a comment down there. Let me know what you would do in this situation. Because I'm honestly, genuinely interested to see if it's only me that thinks that this is way out of bounds. This is insane. I'm not sure being completely honest, I'm not sure that I would have had the restraint and the self-control to handle this as well as these people did. I'm not saying leaving the kid behind is a good thing, if it's a kid. If it's actually a, an evil adult dwarf from the Ukraine that wants to murder your family, yeah, you probably should leave that thing behind, but I'm not making a judgment on whether or not they did the right thing or not, because I don't know for sure if this is actually a child or if this is actually some psychotic dwarf. I don't know. They're still trying to figure that out, I think. But if what the family is saying is true, if you were in that position, what would you do? That's what I would like to know. That's what I would like you to write down in the comments section here on the video on YouTube. I'd really like to see these answers because in my mind, just the thought of this, I go straight into horror movie mode. You know, I'm no longer thinking, okay, I got to make sure I don't do anything stupid because I don't want to get arrested and I don't want you know, everybody to hate me and say, oh, that guy, he's terrible. He, he shot a dwarf in the head or he threw a dwarf off a roof or whatever. I don't, I don't want that, right? Normal James says, oh, that's terrible. Don't do that. Don't, don't throw midgets. It's terrible. Don't do it. It's bad, right? But the parent that is worried about their their kids getting murdered by some psychopath in the home and knowing that you brought that thing into the house, it's your fault because you brought her in and now she might kill your kids. I can see where that might, might make somebody kind of do something irrational. And once again, I'm not advocating that. I think that these people, if, if this is true, and this is actually an adult dwarf that is psychotic and is either going to kill these people or wanted to kill these people. Or maybe she just really enjoys freaking people out and scaring people. Maybe that's her thing. Maybe she had no intention of actually hurting anybody. She just liked to scare them. But either way, I can see why these people would bail and try to get the hell away from that. Because best of circumstances, let's say that this girl is an adult dwarf. She is not a child. And let's say she's perfectly pleasant. You know, there's absolutely no evil there. There's no freakiness. She's not standing above your bed in the middle of the night with a knife, talking about how she wants to skin you alive and wear your face. None of that kind of stuff. 
Let's say she makes you chocolate chip cookies and pancakes every morning, and she's just a, an absolute pleasure to be around. Even in that situation, the best possible scenario, I would still be rather damn upset that I adopted this little girl who turned out to be an adult dwarf. That would still make me very uncomfortable of having some weird adult that I don't know in my home pretending to be a kid. That's There's something wrong there. It's not like she has mental issues where she doesn't understand that she's an adult. She knows damn well she's an adult. She knows how many years she's been alive, but she's pretending to be a kid. Why? That's the question. Why is she pretending to be a child? Is it because she's everything that this family says she is? That she's some crazy, psychopathic, axe-murdering midget? I don't know. Or is it that maybe she's a freeloader. She just wants somebody to take care of her. And she can get away with looking like a kid and pretending to be a kid. So she figures somebody will take care of her. She'll get a decade or more of the easy life without having to work or do anything. That could be a possibility too. But if that's the case, why would you rock the boat and make threats against the family and, and be all creepy like that? If, if you're just lazy and, and don't want to work. See what I'm saying? There's something here that's weird. One thing is for sure, somebody in this situation is out of their damn mind. I 100% believe that. It's either the weird, psychotic, angry dwarf, or it's the parents that think that the little girl is an evil, angry, psychotic dwarf. One of those two are crazy. There's no way that everybody involved in this situation is normal. This is just a very strange, strange story. And honestly, if you listen to this show on a regular basis, you know that I find some crazy stories. We do a lot of different kind of shows here on Staring, and we do a lot of different articles sometimes. You know, we'll, we'll pull up scientific articles, we'll pull up uh, paranormal articles, creature sightings, all kinds of different stuff. But this one here is one of the weirdest and strangest and honestly most terrifying situations that I've ever found an article on. Because not only is the situation weird, but if you're in that situation, that's got to be absolutely horrifying when you find out that this thing is not a kid that it's actually a crazy little thing that wants to kill you. That's nuts. And I don't mean, when I say crazy little thing, I'm, I just don't exactly honestly know what to call this person. You know, I mean, they call her a dwarf in the article, so I guess dwarf would be the right thing to say, but whenever I think dwarf, I think Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, or I think like Lord of the Rings or something. I grew up saying midget, but I guess you're not supposed to say midget anymore. So I don't know what the hell the right word is to use here. But it's a crazy little person. This whole situation's weird. And like I said, for me, it would be absolutely terrifying. So what I want to do now is I want to throw over to Old Boy. And I want to get his opinion on this article and what he thinks and what the hell he would do in this situation. Because me, I'm, I'm almost beyond words with this one. This is just so off-putting. So, old boy, go ahead and take it away, brother. Thank you, brother, and happy Halloween, guys. And the correct word is dwarfism, or a little person. So, that's politically correct. Midget is actually considered a bigot word now, so... Um, but he's he was just saying that's what... Now, he's being politically correct. So, if somebody's listening, that's some people don't, you know, it. we, we get taught different when we're younger, because I used to get, I thought the same thing, but now it's politically correct to call them that. But here's the thing. Why did it take seven years, for one? I looked at these people, they don't, I'm going to sit here and say they don't look like the most honest people in the world, but that's just from out, you know. And I'm going to tell you something. I just watched a horror movie, and it's it's called The Orphan. It's about a girl that gets adopted by these people that have two kids and 
they, I guess the lady lost her or her daughter. Uh, it was a baby, but he lost that one, so they were going to adopt. So they adopted this girl from Russia, who ended up uh, not. She wasn't a little person, but she was a regular kid girl. But she had a she was just some whack job. She killed her original family and ended up being a murderer. It sounds like they watched that movie. I know if people have seen this, this kind of sounds what I'm seeing is they've seen this movie and they're using that. Other than they whole the, the whole part of her having dwarfism, I think. I don't know what the hell to say about this story. This is another weirdo one. Here's what I think. I mean, it could be a possibility. Or these people are just idiots, and they just don't want to take care of the responsibility because they paid for a, a apartment for that. Don't make any sense to me. Maybe she was a little bit older than what she said. They're saying maybe three or four years older. And maybe she was 11, 12, 13, maybe. And maybe she did pretend... They have stuff. I've heard stuff from Russia. People try to come over here or, or, or from other countries, marry the person, live here for eight, seven years. For the time they get in here to be a citizen, I think it's 10 years, and then they're done and they get rid of each other. That's why they made the law where you got to be with somebody for seven to 10 years or something now. So that's not what you're just doing. So that could have happened. I mean, I believe it, but it's, I don't know. I, I, I think that these people may be lying. Now they're divorced too. That kind of, that, I mean, that may not have nothing to do with it, but this whole thing seems kind of fishy to me. I mean, maybe they, they said this girl was trying to kill her all the time, but why didn't they say anything before? Why did it have to go seven years? I think something weird's going on in this situation. They're hiding something, and they probably saw that movie I was talking about, The Orphan, other than the part of having dwarfism, and are using that because it sounds like the same plot. And they're trying to say that's what she did so they get out of trouble because they neglected this kid. I think what happened was this kid wasn't used to her life. I think there's two stories here in America. She probably woke up, didn't know how these people were. They probably fought because they're divorced. And maybe they did something bad to this girl. And there's a t another side of this. Maybe they did something bad to this girl and beat her and abused her because they left her, or she just was a, a regular person pretending to be a 21-year-old or a teenager pretending to be a kid, because she thought she could get away with it, because she had dorsism. So, and did that. That's a possibility, too. I think there's more to this story. They're both not saying. There's a possibility that this lady's saying this, and they're saying that, but they had another reason they brought this Thing. They got. They don't want to go to jail for bringing somebody here illegally. That's what you're going to find out soon. And there was another reason for it. But th this is a weird story altogether. This is this is a weird one, James Pick. <laughs> this is a good one because I enjoyed it for Halloween. Because there's a lot of weird crap that goes on Halloween anyway. You know, with ghosts, demons, monsters lurking around. Now you got some. Um, supposedly, these people say this girl isn't. A child, she has dorsism and, and, and stayed up at night trying to kill them. And they, But they still paid for her apartment to live there. I don't get that. That crazy to me. If somebody's trying to kill my kids, just like James said, they would have been done that night. I would have I, I would have took her back to the orphanage. Or that's another thing. Why didn't you just put her back in an orphanage then? And send her back to Russia or send her to an orphanage in Ameri you know, here in America? It doesn't sound right. It sounds like... There's something weird going on all together in this. And he, there's another sinister thing I'm thinking of, but it's a PG show. You know where I'm going to go on this. Maybe they adopted this girl that wasn't really a girl. And they knew it and brought her here for, you know, how people are in this day and age. You know, mature relationships and then got tired of her because she was nuts and tried to kill them. Or she got jealous of them and tried to kill them because they just were into, you know, they had that, there's a fetish. Maybe they had a fetish or something. People do. And this is another one that people, this is, I'm just throwing it out there. That's why I'm trying to keep it PT as best, best as possible. And she tried to kill them. And then they said, well, they don't want them, you know, the whole apartment thing comes in play. Well, we don't want her to say something. So we'll just keep her sh happy and shut her up. 
And now she's suing them and stuff like that because she got a taste of America. That's just a possibility. I just wanted to throw that wrench in there so that would blow people's mind even more because this is already a crazy story. But I'm telling you, I've heard stories like this. I've, I've seen it in California. I, I, I've seen weird stuff here. I've seen people do this stuff. There's people in, in you know, they, call, uh, they just, they have their own. A lot of people, the way people's relationships are not what it was 25 years ago, even 10 years ago. Things are different now. There's people who are married to have one, girlfriends and boyfriends and boyfriends and girlfriends or girlfriends and boyfriends that have two or three different, they're seeing other people. That just happens. And there's people who have different fetishes, okay? And I'm not going to get into those because, you know, this is a PG show. So you guys can just imagine with your own thoughts. That's just something I was going to throw out of here. Maybe you could talk about that in a couple minutes, James. That was just something I was going to throw in there because, you know, to throw it all, another wrench, crazy wrench into the whole story because this is a weird story. This is pretty weird. But when it was funny when you were telling me because I'm like, I just watched this movie other than the whole dwarfism. It, it was this girl they adopted and she was a crazy, crazy. She was crazy because something, you know, whatever happened in Russia, I don't know. It was that looks like they probably saw that movie or they saw it and they're using that for defense. It just, it sounds like a, like it's a joke. You think that you hear everything and then you hear stories like this, but then you hear crazy stuff happens all the time all over the world. People just are crazy. I, I, I think people don't, don't get it when they do things. And maybe, you know what I think what the real truth is. And this is a sad thing is, Maybe this girl was a little bit older and they thought they got pictures and they found out she was like 12 or 13 and they wanted an 8 or 7 year old. Something happened bad and now they're going with the story. But the sad thing is I think is is they probably were over their heads. They brought this girl and she probably had some emotional problems. Probably fit, the girl thought they were they were going to send her back or you know, some, they were fighting all the time, and maybe she watched them to kill them. Maybe she had a thing for the... You never know what was going on with people. You think you hear everything, and you find out there's all kinds of stuff going on. People have secret lives. They hide a lot of things in the closet. You know, we'll never know the truth about people. That's why I tell people, you're never going to know somebody 100%. Remember that. No one. I don't care what anybody says. Oh, I know them... You don't, because then you'll find out they had a whole different life, and you would, it blows your mind. This There's something sinister to this whole story. It may be the girl or maybe the two people, but there's something fishy, and there's probably a third side to everything. There's three sides, their story, hers, and the truth. And the truth is going to come out one day. And it's probably going to blow people's mind, just like James is saying. How, this, was, this was a weird show, like... This is just a weird one here. I, I'm just throwing ideas because I didn't really know how to go with this one because I know you have to be careful about some of the stuff you say. And this one is, that's kind of why I threw stuff out there and I left it the way I was going to leave it and the way I was going to word things. And just so you know, you know, it wasn't something scary. We did a little bit different, but this is scary because this is real. This is just a real horror movie. The Orphan, go check that guys out. You want to watch a good horror movie tonight, guys? Watch The Orphan at late night with your girl. Because I know in the in the East Coast, you guys, it's already late. But in the West Coast, you know, the show's going to be done at 10. So get your wife or your husband, girlfriend or boyfriend, or vice versa. Whatever relationship you're in, watch the show. If you're single, watch it. And you'll see it's a great, it's a good movie. It's a crazy horror movie. Get the invert, get, see, see if you can buy it from Amazon, or it's on TV right now, but they haven't, I think they have an alternate ending, unrated version of it, I want to get it, because it's a creepy movie, James, you need to check it out too, it's creepy, and this will remind you of the story we're talking about, and it becomes a horror, it's a horror, that's, people don't realize, horror is horrifying, it's not, oh yeah, hey, uh, there's a ghost, he's killing everybody, Jason, that, yeah, there, but there's different genre is a horror and this is a horror story if i've ever heard one no one's got killed but girl tried to it's just crazy it's a twisted horror movie suspense that's how it it, it sounds like a perfect horror movie check it out you'll like it i enjoyed it i just watched it the other day but 
that's that's what this whole thing, this whole craziness seems like to me. So, if you're gonna watch a bunch of horror movies on Halloween, make sure this is one of them, because this one's gonna trip you out. And watch a bunch of horror movies like your classic Halloween, Evil Dead, Friday the Thirteenth, Nightmare, Nightmare on Elm Street. Add this one to it because this one's good too. I really enjoyed this story. I'm glad we got to talk about it. I hope you guys do comment. Tell me what you think. And please don't argue over it. It's not that big of a deal. Just tell us what you think. Comment. We enjoy it. Let us know. Add what you think. Tell us your opinion. You know, we'll read it and see what we think and what we can come up with with this story. And let us know, guys. That's all I'm asking, you know. This is a really good story and I enjoyed it. And I think it's I think it's probably real but there's a third story a, a twist to it there's going to be a, always a twist to everything every story you know there's always going to be a twist to everything and this is going to get crazier if it keeps they keep talking about it and you might see these two go to jail you might see all three of them go to jail or she goes get sent back to the mental ward or goes back to russia you never know you don't or, or you never know what's going to happen or it could just get thrown out because the judge just don't care don't want to hear nothing this stupid because it's if I was a judge, I don't know how I would deal with it. It's kind of crazy to me. I, I would get annoyed and probably just throw it out and tell him to go get a life. It's kind of too late now, seven eight years later. I think it's almost seven years later. So, but that's all I can say, James. I think it's it's just a crazy story, and I it's kind of fits Halloween tonight. The thing about this that is the craziest part is we don't exactly know what the truth is yet. So you kind of have to speculate a little bit. You kind of have to try to figure out what it could possibly be. And unfortunately, this isn't one of those ones where I can give you an answer and say this is exactly what it is, exactly what happened. We don't know. Because the case is still ongoing. So everything we're talking about here tonight is speculation. We read the article. I told you what was said that they said that she does and all this but when you look at this one there is no good scenario here no matter which way you go with it there's no happy ending there's no point where it's like oh it was all blown out of proportion it's no big deal if it is a little girl and it's not a psychotic dwarf then that means that this family brought a child over from the Ukraine, these two people, and they abandoned this child and moved to another country and just left the kid. That's tragic. That's horrible. And if it's what they say happened, that this kid was actually a 22-year-old dwarf who was out of her mind and wanted to kill them. That's scary as hell. But if it's something in between, like what Old Boy was saying, maybe, maybe it was a 22-year-old dwarf, but she wasn't crazy, and they were having some sort of relationship with her, and or maybe she didn't want a relationship, and they were abusing her. They were molesting her or something like that, and that's why she wanted to kill them. There's so many different options here. Who knows what the hell the truth is? But either way you slice this one, it's, it's bad. It's just not a good outcome no matter what. Whatever the truth is, there's still this is a sad story or a terrifying story, either way you look at it. And that's why I said earlier... No matter which version is true or if it's some version in between, there's somebody in this whole deal that, that isn't playing with a full deck. But to me, it seems like old boy hit the nail on the head when he said, why didn't you just take the kid back? Now, I've never adopted a kid. I don't really know the rules, but I'm sure that if you adopt a kid and it turns out to be a 22-year-old psychopath... I'm pretty sure there's got to be some sort of return policy where you can call them up and say, hey, I don't know how this happened, but you guys really made a mistake here. See, we wanted a, a, a cute little baby kid or a, or a little eight-year-old girl or whatever, and, and you sent us Freddy Krueger. This is not right. This is wrong. I mean, there had to be something that could be worked out. I don't understand also how it went on for so long. 
when you first found out that this was not a little girl, why the hell didn't you call somebody right away? Why did this go on? Why did it get to the point where this kid is threatening you and standing in front of your bed with a knife and all this crazy stuff? Why did it ever get to that point if what they're saying is true? To me, that, that also sounds kind of fishy. I don't understand that, especially when you have children. If you have other children, why would you, in any reality, allow this to go on for any more than a day? The very first day I found out that this was not a child, that it was an adult, they'd be out of my damn house. One way or the other, they'd be out. I would try to call the authorities and try to get it taken care of correctly, but one way or the other, that adult is not sleeping in my home with my children, period. It's not going to happen. So I don't really understand the motivation here of the parents if what they're saying is true. Why would you stick around and make sure that that the little psycho has a an apartment and, and is set up before you leave? I mean, none of that makes sense. Why would you do that? Why wouldn't you just get rid of the thing that's going to kill your kids? Why wouldn't you get rid of that person? Why would you keep it around? To me, it makes absolutely no sense. But if the flip side is true, if, if it is a little girl and it's not a 22-year-old dwarf, then that means these people are terrible-ass people because they, they just left the kid all, all alone in an apartment and, and bailed. That, that's bad, too. And who knows, if they're willing to do that and, and make up this story about this little girl being some psychopathic dwarf, what else were they doing? What else are they capable of? Because that's that's kind of out there. If if you're going to pull something like that, you're you're not all right in the head. You're you're kind of messed up. So what else are you doing? What else are you capable of? This is one that there's just so many different things to unravel, and there's so many possibilities. And as I said, we have no idea what the actual truth is yet. This is all speculation. And I'm sure that there there will be people that are well, you shouldn't speculate because we will find out at court and everything. That's probably true. But we like a good mystery here on staring. We, we do this for a living. This is what we do. We try to unravel these kind of things. And it's a lot of fun to speculate. And this is a crazy, crazy tale. And I'm sure that down in the comments we'll have all kinds of different people giving their opinion on on what they would do and what they think is the truth. And that's awesome. I can't wait to read that stuff. And I'm sure also I'm going to have some PC people that are going to be awful upset with me for saying the wrong word, saying midget when I should have said dwarf or whatever. And that's cool too. I don't care. Understand that I am not a politically correct kind of person. I don't know all the right terminology. And frankly, honestly, I really don't care. I'm an older guy that lives in the mountains of Virginia. I'm, I have no idea what pop culture is going on. I'm, I'm a complete moron when it comes to pop culture. Like, when we play Trivia Pursuit at my house, I love that game. I can rock through all of the categories until we get to the arts and entertainment, where I'm supposed to know about celebrities and pop music and all this kind of stuff. And I have absolutely no idea. And I will be stuck on that one damn piece for the entire game. The rest of the piece is simple. I can rock out history, I can rock out science, I can rock them all. But when it comes to pop culture and and celebrity gossip and and knowing Broadway musicals and all that kind of stuff, I have no idea. I am horrible at that because I don't pay any attention to it. I don't really care about pop culture. I don't care about what is the right thing that people are saying now as opposed to what they said earlier. None of that stuff matters to me. So if I said the wrong thing, and I offended you if you're a dwarf or whatever you like to be called and you're mad at me, I'm sorry. I'll just say that right now. I apologize to you. I meant no harm. I have no idea what the right terms are. And frankly, this story has me kind of shooken up. This is weird, man. This is Because I put myself in this position and I say, what the hell would I do here? And it's unsettling. It really, really is. I have not seen that movie The Orphan yet. I'm definitely going to have to check that out because it sounds like that movie would not only be a trip to watch because I, I like a good horror movie if it's a good one. I don't like the real the real bad horror movies, especially the ghost movies. I cannot stand most ghost movies because they're terrible. 
but I like a good horror movie, especially something different like this. This is such a different kind of story that you don't hear very often. That I'll, I'll definitely have to check that movie out. But not only will it be interesting and, and a fun movie to watch, but maybe it'll shed a little light on this case because I think Old Boy might be onto something here. If these parents are lying, if this is actually a little girl and they just bailed on the, and abandoned the child, then maybe they did get the idea for their excuse from this movie. That would make sense. It's, I mean, like I said, I haven't seen it, but if the plot line goes pretty much along what they're saying, with the exception of it actually being an adult that looks like a kid, if that's the only difference, then it, that would explain why they had such a strange tale to tell. Like I said, guys, I really don't know on this one. This is a completely mind-blowing story. And I hope that you guys really enjoyed this one. This is, like I said, I think the perfect story to do on Halloween. Because last Halloween we did, uh, every week of October, we did a different creature, a different monster, that kind of thing. We've already kind of done that. So what we wanted to do this time was just do our normal shows. And then for the Halloween week episode that we're going to record on Halloween, we wanted it to be something really, really out there and weird. Something horrifying. And, and this one, I think, fits that bill because, like I said, guys, whichever way you go, whichever way you go, it's crazy, man. It's, it's a scary tale no matter what. So with that being said, I'm going to throw it back over to Old Boy for his final sum up, and then we'll do our shout-outs and get out of here. Thank you, brother. And yeah, check that movie out. It's called The Ar Orphan Guys. If you have YouTube TV, and I know you do, James, you can watch it now on AMC. They have like their 30 horror movies. You can you have demand, so you can watch it right now. It's on uh, on there. That's the I think the edited version. You can or you can go buy it. It's like 10 bucks with the un unrated. So yes, I think they got that story from there. I think the same thing. This is some crazy weird story, and I feel bad if the girl was a little girl and got left. I think there's something going on here that maybe we'll find out down the line and maybe we'll can do another show about this one day. That would be great. And I hope you guys enjoyed this show, the Halloween show. And I hope you guys have a great night. Check out for, watch out for candy. Um, watch your kids. Cause there's a lot of weirdos out there. And just remember this, these stories exist and these people exist. So the, I, I, I'm the same thing. I really don't have an answer for this one. It's kind of baffling. It's kind of weird and creepy. If you think about it, it's a perfect Halloween show. I really enjoyed it. And it was something different. Like you said, we had, we, we did the last two years, you know, and, Coming up in, I think, in January or the end of December, there'll be three years that we've been doing Staring into the Abyss. We started doing it before with something called it, something else, but it came Staring, in this, in, in staring into the Abyss around, I think it was the beginning of January. So around that December, January, it's going to be celebrating our third year do, of doing this show, Staring into the Abyss. I can't believe it's been three years we've been doing this show. That's crazy. You know, to think of how far we come in three years. So, I want to thank you guys all on Parax. Hopefully, we can get on iTunes. We're talking about that probably eventually one day, and some other stuff you can. And there's other affiliates that they have that you can listen to. Maybe one day go on iCloud too. We'll see. That's another thing. Check us out on YouTube, you guys. Subscribe to James Hershey YouTube page. Uh, you guys want merchandise, shirts, clothes, um, blankets iPod cases, it's there. You want something special made, we'll do it. doesn't even have to be staring. It could be just anything, guys. You guys check out the store. And we're lowering the prices on stuff so it's cheap for you guys to buy it. And if you guys want something autographed, let us know. Send it to us, and we'll pay and send it back to you and autograph it for you. So that, too. Both of us or one of us, it doesn't matter. Just this letter. That, and you can also get James's books. I think he's going to put those up for sale on there. I don't know if he can yet because Amazon and all that. There's laws, so he'll let you know. But I hope everybody has a great Halloween. Um, be safe. I love you. Blessed be. Misfits, sugar ladies, monster lovers, and demon hunters, I love you. Have a great night, and happy Halloween, and blessed be, guys. For a portion of my life, Halloween was probably my busiest time of the year. 
The reason for that is I am a horror author. I write horror novels. And when I was pumping them out like crazy, I was booked throughout all of October. I would go and do signings. I would do speeches. I would be a guest on different shows. All this kind of stuff. And it's like I was busy as hell during Halloween. Now, since I started doing Staring, I, I haven't released as many books. And I'm working on another one now, and it'll eventually get done. But during my, my prime of writing, I, I mean, I put out four books that were bestsellers in two years. In a span of two years, I, I put out four separate novels that were about 400 pages each, which is a lot. And I was constantly going and doing events and doing uh, appearances and guest spots and all this kind of stuff during October. And it's, it's kind of funny because my favorite holiday out of all the holidays is Christmas. I absolutely love Christmas. I love the idea of Christmas. It's not only the religious aspect of it, but I just love the idea of a holiday where the whole point of it is love and that you can get a gift for all the people you care about that they're going to be happy with, that they're going to really enjoy. That's special. And everybody is nicer to each other and loves each other more during Christmas time, it seems. And so that's why Christmas has always been my favorite. And that's probably a shock to a lot of people, because you would think that because of what I do for a living, I, I write horror novels and I do a, a paranormal radio show where I talk about demons and ghosts and monsters all the time. You would think that I'm a huge Halloween person. But in reality, I, I'm really not all that into Halloween. I I'm more of a Christmas guy. Old boy is really into Halloween. He loves this holiday. And I'm sure the majority of you listening, if you listen to this kind of radio show, then you are into Halloween too. And all I would say to you is have fun, enjoy yourselves, but please just be careful. There are a lot of sick, sick people in the world today. I mean, that's obviously evidenced by what our show was tonight. I mean, this story shows you that there are a lot of sick people in this world. And there's, unfortunately, a lot of people in this world that prey on children for many different reasons. So just make sure you know where your kids are and make sure that you look after them. I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I, I'm sure you're responsible parents, and I know you'll do a great job. I just worry about children especially in times like these when it's so easy the kids are out trick-or-treating by themselves and anybody that wants to do harm can easily disguise themselves because they can just wear a costume because everybody's wearing a costume on halloween and so it's really a a dangerous time sometimes so all i would say is i will keep every one of you in my prayers that you and your family are safe this Halloween and that you have a really, really good time. And I appreciate greatly all the support that you guys have given our show and us individually. If you would like to support the show, Old Boy mentioned our merchandise store. If you're watching this on YouTube right now, the link is down in the description box. If you're listening on the radio, the link is teespring.com slash stores slash staring into the abyss. If you're listening on the radio, please go to the YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash James Hershey Jr. And subscribe to the channel. And that's really a great resource for you if you enjoy staring into the abyss because I have put every single episode we've ever done of staring on that channel. So you can go back and you can listen to the first show we did all the way till tonight. Every single episode is there. And it's on a whole bunch of different topics. If you're a longtime listener of this show and you've been with us on this journey for years, then you know that we have done some spectacular episodes. 
we've done episodes that contain more information on subject matters that there's not much information known than you'll ever see anywhere else. Every one of our shows is usually just packed to the brim with information that you can't find. And that's a hard thing to do. And as Old Boy said, we're coming up here very soon on three years. And it kind of blows my mind to think about that. That we've been doing this for three years now. And to think of the amount of work that goes into each one of these episodes. Especially when we do a research show where I'm laying out 30 or 40 minutes of nothing but pure information that you don't find anywhere else that you have to go and research to find when i'm talking about things that i found in source documents from the middle ages when i do those kind of shows to think about the amount of work that goes into that and that we do it every week and we've been doing it for three years that blows my mind and sometimes we look back and we just can't believe some of the shows we've done. They're, they're so good, some of them. And I'm not saying that to toot my own horn or anything like that. I'm just saying we'll actually go back and look sometimes. And be like, oh, man, you remember doing that show? Man, that was an amazing show. Because what happens is it's kind of like when I played music. You, you play the show, and then you're off to the next city. And you do that show. And then you're off to the next city. And you don't really think about what you just did. You're just moving forward to the next show. This is kind of almost the same way, even though we're not going city to city. But once I wrap up a show and I'm done with it, it's time to start on the next show because I have to research that next show. So that is just sometimes hundreds of hours of research that I have to do to be ready for that next episode. And I've got a week to do it. So it's almost immediately the next day after I record the one show and get it edited and, and put up and everything's done I got to start on the next one so you don't really get that chance to to look back and say wow look at what we've done this is pretty amazing like I said please don't misunderstand me. I'm not I'm not tooting my own horn here I'm not trying to say we're the greatest in the world or any of that kind of goofy stuff I honestly don't care about being famous or about money or any of that stuff I don't care about it what drives me is answering the questions that I don't have answers to. I like taking some of these mysteries and some of these things that most people don't know a lot about, and I will dig up everything that's known on that subject matter. I will understand it inside and out because I will spend an insane amount of time researching it until I have that understanding of it. And then I will relay all that information. That's what drives me, is answering those questions, getting all that info out there. That's what makes me tick. I could care less if we're famous. I could care less about the money. I, I don't care about any of that stuff. So when I say some of the amazing shows we've done, I don't mean it like, hey, look how great we are. I'm just saying you don't find this level of information many other places. And I am proud of a lot of the episodes we've done. I am truly proud of them. I think that it's a real accomplishment to do this for three years with knowing the amount of work that I put into each show. So with that being said, I hope that everyone listening has a wonderful, wonderful Halloween. I pray that your family is safe, that you get great candy, and that you just have a blast. I hope you have the time of your lives. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. This wasn't a super deep research show, but this was such a weird story. I just had to share it with you guys. Thank you again for all your support. And until I speak to you again, love many, trust few, and do harm to none. God loves you, and so do we. Happy Halloween, everyone. Bye-bye.